Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. In the last episode I was talking about how I'd finally finished all four sciences for all four types. Um, so all 16 space sciences in fact. So we've got all of the, um, the biological ones coming through here and I've finally got enough of all of the inputs by the looks of it. Um, we've got all four of the um, uh, material sciences here, all of the energy sciences here and then all of the astro sciences here except that one and two are a bit have been a bit heavily used recently so we're um, a little bit short of them but we're churning them out as fast as we can so the the machines are should all be working let's have a quick look at that um yes there seems to be general general construction going on here this machine is running flat out this machine is running as fast as it can given that it needs it needs to wait for the science pack ones to come through so we're, we're rebuilding some stocks of the supplies of those having used quite a lot of them for research but i think these the, given that these are running are actually running at full speed i'm going to call that okay for now so everything is everything's happily running we can have a look down here let's let's have a look let's let's, let's check and check on check in on them all make sure we've got um, decent amounts of throughput everywhere so <laughs> already i found a problem so um biological one has stopped working and why is that so there must be a it's only got three of its data cards so the fourth one no, the fourth one comes from here and so we've got a shortage of right we've got a shortage of the um uh, orange goo, the chemical gel, which is um, a little bit of a concern. So let's have a quick look and see what's going on there and why, why there's a problem with that. Um, chemical gel is made over here and we've got some empty tanks. As a train just, a train hasn't just been, has it? No. So we're not, we're not producing chemical gel as fast as I would like. So presumably there's been some sort of backup somewhere and some sort of general fail. So here we've got a shortage of no, petroleum gas. Okay, it's, it's, it's thermal water that we're short of because we're short of lube. And that presumably is because, yes, we're short of heavy oil up here. So that's right. So what's happened here is that I've been making the... Um, I've been processing the oil that's coming from the methane methane ice, which we're melting here into methane gas and then turning into oil. Um, I'm doing this with the... The, the, uh, lots of the produce lots of light oil recipe because that was what I needed at the time. So I think what I'm going to have to do here is switch these over to the um, the heavy oil heavy recipe. This one, like that. It's not going to run very much um, because we're still going to be full of light oil. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but it'll at least produce a bit of heavy oil, which should get the should get things running again a little bit. Now, the reason I chose to have all of these running on uh, the light oil heavy um, method was because if we look over here, we've got we're making rocket fuel for the um, uh, what do you call it? It's for the probes that I'm sending out out here with my, with these spaceships, and that's a very very light oil intensive process because you need because I was just using that to make these um, to make the solid fuel and then to make the uh, the actual rocket fuel. Um, this has now ground to a halt because we don't actually need that many probes. Also, this has stopped. This is broken. Hmm. All right. Why are you broken? Um, I bet. I th oh, there's only one satellite in there. Right. I'm going to have to have a quick look at that. So this is going to be a bit of a distraction from what I was trying to say, but that's okay because I didn't have an enormous amount to talk about. So actually, this is quite convenient. So you, why are you not running? You aren't okay because this is. What? So we've got a sat I've got a probe there, but for some reason this inserter hasn't. So insert it, insert it if less than one on the logistics network. So, oh, there is right. Oh, okay. Because these are all linked on the same logistics network. That's that's a bit of a fail there. So I think in this case, normally I reckon on linking these things up to the logistics network in case there are any anywhere else. But in this particular case, I think this should just be um, not connected to this logistics network and enabled if let's see this was the these satellites is less than one so that'll keep passing them across into here but we need to then disconnect from the circuit network um sorry the logistics network there we go so that'll now fly them over to there and eventually we'll get enough in there we need, i need to do the same here as well so this one needs to also work for the uh, the energy probes less than one and turn off the um logistics network connection so again this will keep this up at least what uh, at exactly what at, um, this will keep this at one or more so it'll if there's none in here it'll put one in and as you can see this is doing the same thing over here um, we just need to put in enormous quantities of these um, memory cards because it's basically it uses 
was a thousand of those for each one of these. Yes. So we're loading that up as quickly as possible, and then we can pass them over to here. And eventually, once we've got them in here, we can then go... Uh, which, when, it, when there's five of them, the spaceship will fly off and go and get some more asteroid field data. Okay, so that was a bit of an oops. Um, <laughs> I've... I messed up down there because the because these are on the same network. It was watching that one as well, and so yeah. In fact, I've had third thoughts. What I should do here is um, not have it connected to the this network, or and the same one this one. But I should say you do connect to the logistics network, and that should be at least six. There we go. And if we do the same here. Logistics Network Connect. That has, should be at least six. That way we'll end up with hopefully five in each of these. Um, and then a sixth one in, in here. And then it'll stop running. And so then, and then that means when the spaceship goes away, it'll start making them again. And so we've got up to six in here. Then when the spaceship comes back, we'll have the five. To, we'll have enough to fly them straight across there and put them into the spaceship. Okay, that's that's better, I think. I think I'm, I'm, I'm happier with that. That should now do what I want. My only slight concern is when the spaceship goes away... I don't know if these are actually going to be in a logistics network. So, oh yes, they are because there's this one up here, and this one down here. Okay, that's yep, that's all absolutely fine. Except we've run, now run out of memory cards completely. So we're calling in for some more. So that's gonna that's that's a sort of a problem that will just basically solve itself. Okay, so as I was trying to say, we are basically okay for all of the science, except there are little things here and there that need tweaking. Um, so. Yes, um, that will hopefully put a bit of a load on the light oil from here and therefore get this up and running again because once because making these probes I think requires quite a lot of light oil. Where is it? It's, up here. it's just up here. Let's, let's check. That out. Yeah, so there we go. We're chugging through on these as well. So that'll be using up the light oil and there's 28,000 in there. So in about 3,000 oils worth, we'll be calling for some more and that probably won't take that long with the amount of um, oil we chug through down here. Um, yeah, because those do go up here. Yeah, we've got quite a lot of extra to fill in along here. Okay, good. So that's 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 now probably working. I think that's going to fix all of my problems, including the ones that are happening further upstream as well. So I think we are now sorted. We just need this to run a bit faster and a bit longer and use up all of the oil. 26. So you can see, this is dropping quite quickly. That's gone from 28 to 26 in the time I was uh, not paying attention to it. There we go. Getting... getting Nearly down to zero, <laughs> because of course there's the minus twenty-five thousand there. There we go, and oop, it's gone negative. So when they gets gets to, I'm not sure exactly what that has to get to, but that should now summon another train, a train full of oil, fairly soon, I think. Um, I don't remember the exact rules for this. I've got it set, I've got that set to one stack. I don't know. We'll see. But that that should that should should now work. I have every confidence in it. And that will get us. That will mean we'll have some heavy oil, so we'll be able to get the quite chemical gel over here, and that will allow the biological sciences to start working again. Right, good. I'm glad I was able to fix that. So the other thing I've been doing now that I've got all of the sciences done, I've been thinking what's what's next. And the obvious thing is this is basically going to be the last episode of series four because series four was all about well we had series one was about getting off Norvis series two was about doing the first tier of um, space science series three was carrying on with space science um, series four was also carrying on with space science but using spaceships as well so now that I've finished space science there's now the next thing to do on the list is start working on um, the deep space sciences so the black ones or the gray ones they're appearing here so these are going to these are going to be the next thing and that's going to require me to fly way outside the solar system and see how things see what's going on out there so for a bit of a tidy up before i did that i thought i've got all this system up here which is very very um logistics bot heavy so we're pulling in all of the resources from everywhere all over the place passing them into in, into pulling them in and buy blue chests to over here and then we're making things so for example here we're making the genetics christmas trees so we've got a blue chest here that's requesting all of the things that go into one of those except this goop which we apparently don't have so that needs to be fed manually i guess they're going in there and then coming out into a red chest which i can then claim as i fly past and the logistics box will bring to me here i've got the growth facilities that's got all the stuff being brought in for them into this blue chest um, we're making the lights on site a bit admittedly but other than that it's all being brought in and then they're being put out here but this is very very logistics bot heavy and i don't like the logistics bot based system really it's it feels 
It feels a bit not properly Factorio-y to me, despite that being what we've just tried on in Industrial Revolution. Um, but also, more to the point, in space, there's this problem where logistics bots will gradually crash. So, as you can see here, I've got 394 at the moment, but I'm sure I've brought probably a thousand up into space. But they keep. But there's this thing that where if you've got more than about 20 of them, they just crash because there's because there's interference from the solar radiation. I think is the uh, is the in-game rationale for that. So I want to move away from that as much as I can. I also need to go around and do a big tidy up of all of these chests that have got all kinds of rubbish in them, like like this one that's got loads and loads of stone and copper ore, uh, the stone and, and, and iron ore as well. The stone needs to be delivered to up here somewhere. Um, one of the one of these one of these systems there, this one here, and these needs to be put in here um, in order to be, for it to, so it can be taken out and used in the system. The iron and copper ore need to be put into the um, into the smelting machines down here, so again they'll be fed out into the into the general system and used up. So there's a big tidy up needed. Then my fir the first stage of this has been all over here, where I put in some more of my standard unloading stations. And as you can see here, these are pulling in nor fairly normal resources. There's another one over here, again, standard, fairly standard resources, but including quantum supercomputers here, which we seem to have run out of. So I'm going to need to look into that as well at some point. And some of the fluids, and so on, and so on, and so on. And then this is all feeding into a, a little bus down here, where we've got all of these different things. And then when we're, we're, we're assembling those into all the components that are required for making stuff. So here we're turning the beryllium ingots into beryllium plates, and then into beryllium rods, beryllium frames, these um, spaceship, what they're called, uh, aeroframe bulkheads, and so on. And these are all getting put out onto the bus. So the bus is getting steadily wider and wider. And then we're starting to make things like... And then we can use this to make the spaceship floor, the spaceship walls, the spaceship doors, spaceship engines, spaceship ion engines. Um, and all these go into red chests because they're going to get built up by, by robots, by, by the construction bots. Um, a lot of these seem to have stopped working. I'm going to have to... Oh no, oh no, it's just... The, oh, oh, it's because there are loads out in the logistics network. So these are all set to watch for less than 20 in the logistics network. And so they're not in here, but they are somewhere. Probably I should turn all of these into green chests and try and summon all the bits and pieces back out of the logistics network to tidy it up, but I haven't done that yet. Um, so yeah, and all the spaceship parts up to here. Then we're making, then we're doing the sort of holmium processing. So we're making holmium wire, holmium solenoids. Again, putting them onto the onto the bus. Holmium plates. For some reason, this one's backwards. I'm not quite sure why. I think I had a. Oh yeah, it was so that I could just put the solenoids straight from there into the into the um, ion engines over here, which is a little bit silly, but never mind. Then we're doing the same sort of thing with iridium, so we're making the plates, we're making the girders, we're making the bearings, we're making the, what are these things called, heavy composites, we're making the heavy assemblies um, all the way along here. And they're all, again, getting pushed out onto the bus so they can be used for whatever needs them. Then we're making dynamic emitters, I've no idea what that's supposed to be, it looks like a laser of some sort, but um, I don't know. But it's, it's used for stuff later on, like this nano nanomaterial. Um, and that also produces scrap contaminated scrap, which is getting fed out, and that's why there's a, a scrap disposal station up here that can take it away and, and deal with it elsewhere. And that allows us to make things like superconducting cables and um, whatever these things are, lattice pressure vessels, and finally, I've been able to make the um, the high temperature turbine generator and high temperature heat exchanger, and these allow you to deal with 5,000 degrees steam, and they're a lot more compact, and they're a lot. I think they're a little bit more efficient than the. Um, than the systems I've been using before. Maybe, maybe they're not. Maybe they're, I'm not sure whether they're actually more efficient. But that means for things like this one on <clears throat> this system down here, on I've got on Norbis Orbit, I could replace all of this with something like three of those little heat exchangers and um, and super turbines, um, and just clump, clump them onto the three three sides of this, and they would work. They would produce just as much power as all of this shenaniganry does. So it just make things a lot smaller and a lot neater. Um, they're also recycling turbines as well, so they're uh, so they, they return all, almost all of the water as oh, sorry almost all of the steam as water, so you can reuse it. Something like 99% efficient on that. So they're really really good. Um, and then I'm making again the heat the uh, beam receivers, and um, I've started making um, shield emitters as well. So I haven't put this on it, these shield projectors anywhere yet, but this is going to be one of the things that I will start using fairly soon on the front of spaceships. So I can make spaceships go a bit faster without so, so they've got a bit more protection. They don't have to rely just on the lasers to stop the uh, to block the to block the asteroids that are coming in. They can actually use the uh, use the shields to, to block them properly without taking damage to their uh, front uh, to the front walls on them. So that's going to be really useful. It's going to let my spaceships travel a bit, a, a little bit faster, as I say. <clears throat> which I'm going to, is going to be even more important once I upgrade to antimatter engines, which are still some way off. That's some, hidden behind some deep space science. So that's um, 
yeah, that's been series. That has been series four of Lawrence Place Victoria Space Exploration. Uh, there's still actually quite a lot of tidying that I need to do, so maybe I'll get on with some, some more of that before uh, before the next episode. We'll see. I tend to mostly just be playing on stream at the moment, and I, so I tend to say, well, I won't do the boring tidying up stuff for now because you're all here watching. I'll try and stick with, try and keep you doing the interesting stuff, and I'll do the other stuff when I'm when I'm not streaming. But that hasn't really been happening. <laughs> So, yes, that's been, um, as I say, that's been Series 4. Thank you very much for watching. Um, there haven't been enormous leaps and jumps since the next la last episode, but I thought it'd be nice to have one sort of final final episode. I had a rocket crash over here, which is why there's a load of damage and why there's um, lots of... Oh. <laughs> that's... Get rid of that. <laughs> that's stupid. It's just transferring the... Yeah, so this was because massive quantities of vulcanite had been gathered up by had been had been dumped by a crashing rocket all around over here um and the construction bots have started picking it up and they've been putting it in the yellow chests over here because of course they had it's a sort of an obvious place to tidy it to so i used this to try and pull it back out again i didn't think that this was a red chest and therefore it would just get end up going round and round and round in circles here which is a bit silly but never mind i fixed that now so we just need to dump this out again, and then I can demolish that and take it away. And the, the, the whole and the, and the problem has basically been fixed. I've tidied up. I just haven't fixed this because there don't seem to be any repair packs up here. There we go. That's finished. Let's um, do that. Right. So thank you very much for watching. As ever, don't forget to come back next week for another episode. Come along on Tuesdays if you want to watch the stream, and come along on Thursdays for the Factorio Industrial Revolution stream. There's also the GTA videos coming out at weekends, and I've got a couple of other videos in the pipeline that I want to release, basically as, as soon as I can, as soon as I've got time to, to finish off getting the, a few little bits of footage and actually process the whole things and put them together. So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching, and goodbye.